Hi, uh, so uh, I am Shatil and uh, I am currently the cloud captain in AWS Cloud Club Hi, uh, Kuwait. Uh, so uh, I am Shatil and uh, I am currently the cloud captain. Okay, so basically, I um, we don't have Habib Bai uh, with us at the moment, but uh, he's uh, he's helped us <clears throat> to organize the event basically, and uh, we're going to start to show you basically about Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Party Rock, which are essentially uh, basically AI builder, AI app builders. And if you want to build your own version of basically ChatGPT or any kind of AI agent, you can basically use Amazon Bedrock or Amazon Party Rock. And uh, that's uh, going to help you to um, better manage your workflows and it's also going to uh, sort of uh, help you to understand how actually AI models work and how you can do these things using um, Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Party Rock. So you know, with that, uh, I guess we can get started here. And here is a... Uh, so, uh, I am... so here is a... Uh, presentation slide, basically our presentation slide, and I hope you all can see this. So currently we're going to be learning first of all about uh, AWS or what's the cloud, basically. So uh, the cloud is a place where you, the most basic example that can be given about the cloud is uh, this uh, Google, Google Drive, right? So Google Drive helps you store your data and uh, Google Drive will help you store your data through storing it in a remote server somewhere else. So how is that working? Basically, how is Google Drive storing your data in a remote server in, in a remote server across a sea or across another continent? How does that actually work? So what happens is basically all of the servers are not storing your data. Basically, these are chunks of data that are stored and copied throughout many data storage systems. And basically these data storage systems are going to store different amounts of data or different percentages of your data. And that is going to help uh, help you access those data whenever and wherever you want them. And that's just a basic example. But basically, why do we need it with the AI, if you may ask? Or what is exactly Amazon Bedrock? So Amazon Bedrock is a place where you can use those AI models. Basically, what we have to do in order to create something like ChatGPT is that we have to create an AI model that understands human language. That is called natural language processing. And when it understands those languages, after that, it can analyze our wishes. Basically, whenever you say to ChatGPT that uh, do this or do that or code me this or create an image or stuff like that, basically, they're analyzing the natural languages. They're processing the natural languages and then they're giving you the output. So uh, they need a lot of computing power to do that. Now, by, by computing power, I mean gigabytes and terabytes of uh, GPU or computer storage. Now, in a natural uh, environment, basically in your house or in your office, you don't have that, right? So we don't have access to that kind of technology or that kind of storage facility in our day-to-day -day lives. You don't have, um, a, a, let's say, a RTX 4090 sitting around in your house. What you do in this case is you go to a cloud service provider like AWS, who is uh, the top cloud service provider in the world, and you use their services to train your AI models or machine learning models, and they will give you like a, uh, like a gigabyte or two gigabytes of extra storage or RAMs. That is basically a cloud storage. Basically, 
basically you're accessing a computer, a powerful computer that is not located within your vicinity, but rather located far away, but you're accessing it through the cloud so that you can use uh, those kind of uh, advantages. Basically a cloud, uh, cloud service computer or server usually has more power than your average laptop. So you can get access to that by uh, going to their cloud service. And basically you can use a lot of the advantages. For example, you can see here uh, that uh, you can use state of the art LLM uh, to power your apps. Sorry, we're gonna, yeah. So what are LLMs? Basically they are large language models. So you have used ChatGPT, right? What ChatGPT essentially is, is a GPT LLM. Basically it is a large language model what that means is it has been trained on human language for a long period of time. That's why it's called a large language model and it can understand the human language or text inputs. And that's how you get the output from ChatGPT. Now, you don't have access to use ChatGPT's API or to basically uh, kind of use uh, like that much powerful model in your local laptop. So what? how do you access that? This is how you access it through Amazon Bedrock. Amazon Bedrock provides you with the API credits or the API model basically, and you can custom train the AI model to do anything you want. Basically, let's say, what does ChatGPT do? ChatGPT does mostly everything, right? but there are uh, a lot of limitations basically chat gpt cannot access data after 2k22 or uh, chat gpt cannot give you proper answers sometimes because it doesn't have uh, access to the internet chat gpt4 does but it costs 20 dollars to do it i mean come on who's gonna spend that much money when you're you know uh, a student basically just needs to do their assignments or research basically so we can create our own custom models, but we would have to uh, also apply for a bedrock model uh, access. Basically, these models are not going to be given to you for free, obviously. You will have to uh, pay an amount, but that amount will be based on solely on your usage. Basically, if you use like two gigabytes of storage, you'll have to pay for two gigabytes, nothing more. So you don't have to pay like extra money for all the extra things or the things that you don't need. That's the most uh, competent thing about AWS Cloud is that you only pay for what you use. And the second thing is database. Basically, when you are training a machine learning model, you use usually terabytes of data, like a lot of data. How do you store that data? You can store, you cannot use three terabytes or four terabytes of a storage facility in your laptop, obviously. So how do you have access to that kind of data storage? And that again comes to AWS Bedrock or AWS Cloud Services. So basically you can train a machine learning model or upload a lot of data to train that model. Uh, let's say we want to detect some, uh, detect some anomalies or detect a object detection model basically. Uh, so a lot of people have used YOLO V7 or stuff like that to detect various kinds of objects like like you know um, fruits or people or cars etc so basically we can train a model based on a lot of photographs the reason models like uh, let's say uh, chat gpt or you have uh, used midjourney right so midjourney i can detect a lot of things in, in the images because it has been trained on millions and millions of images but what it cannot detect is the human hand. It is because we as humans are not perfect. We like as human artists can't even draw hands properly. So how do you expect an AI to do it? Basically, if you train it on good type of photos, it can generate that image for you. But there's not a lot of good photos of hand and it's hard to detect for an AI model. Now, yes, and then we come to the training of the machine learning models. Basically, we can use the cloud environment to train our machine learning models as we want them. Basically, we can get access to the bedrock models or foundation models from bedrock, and then we can train them uh, according to whatever the needs that we need to fulfill. Now, why would you use Amazon Bedrock, right? 
so basically there's a lot of uh, same kind of uh, ser services available for other cloud providers as well mm, namely like um, uh, microsoft azure or google cloud for example mm -hmm. are some of the prominent ones but why use amazon bedrock at all because amazon is the best service provider at the moment of cloud services as well as uh, they are moving towards gen ai even more as it gains more popularity because it's a huge space where cloud can have a bigger impact so what amazon bedrock provides you aws bedrock provides you is that high level machine learning models like chat gpt dali or even you've heard of a uh, uh, claude 2 which helps you to read research papers or any document that you upload and you can converse with the document very easily and it gives you the ability to easily scale your machine learning apps basically if you have like 10 users or uh, 20 users there's not a lot of traffic to your site or website but when you have uh, more users, basically, um, let's say 100, or even when uh, sometimes some websites go viral, you could uh, end up having like a thousand or 10,000 users. You'd have to instantly scale up very fast. Your website would have to scale up very fast. Otherwise, your database might uh, have some issues. It might not run because when there's overloading, you've seen Facebook stopping. You've seen a lot of uh, services stopping, like um, uh, lagging or due to server errors. Why does that happen? Because there's sometimes an overload on the servers. Basically, if 50 million users are trying to use the same website at the same moment, this is more prominent when you're like playing video games. So basically, uh, when you're playing video games, you can uh, sort of uh, see that your ping is very high when a lot of people are playing the game at the same time. So what we can do in that regard is we can scale up the number of users that our uh, model or program can handle through the cloud. And that is going to help us sort of uh, manage the situation. And after that, we have... Uh, the network and i don't mean the like a, a mobile network i mean a network of agents a network of ai agents that you can use to make your workflow much much easier so how does that work basically there's a lot of models for a lot of different uh, tasks there's a uh, text to uh, there's language models which are specifically used to understand the text inputs and uh, they can be used to uh, provide you with coding examples as well and uh, they can also be used to understand other types of texts like uh, writing a poem uh, writing a documentary stuff like that and then there's image generation models the sole purpose of which is to generate images according to the type of um, the type of input you give them or the type of images you want for example uh, mid journey or tally stuff like that so now this is a basic machine learning app or sorry, AI app uh, that we're going to be talking, talking about in this, um, in this presentation. And uh, I'm going to be helping you understand how it actually works. And then we're going to be creating our own AI app using Amazon Party Rock. Um, and uh, basically that's going to be a assistant uh, to help us do assignments or research papers. So let's first of all, look at the logic of our app. So first of all, we have Amazon Bedrock. So we have Amazon Bedrock, sorry. And uh, on the first step, basically, we have the user, right? So we have a user who is trying to access your app. Oh, sorry, that's a video. So you have a user that is trying to access your app. And then uh, we have... And then we have a, 
React Frontend that is built with AWS Amplify. AWS Amplify is basically a uh, framework or cloud service that helps you easily build websites. So we have a website basically built with AWS Amplify and React. So React is a front-end framework, which is a web framework. So the first thing the user does it is he gives the AI app an input. Basically, when you ask ChatGPT to do something, uh, basically user submits an initial prompt. The prompt is uh, basically the input or the text input uh, in the front end. Basically, when you prompt ChatGPT to do something, initial prompt is forwarded to Flask app. Now, Flask app is the back end or the backbone of our functionality. And uh, it is built with Flask and Langchain. Langchain is a uh, framework that uh, helps you to build AI apps easily. And it has a lot of built-in functionality to do different kinds of stuff. For example, PDF reading by the AI model or PDF uploading and uh, conversing with your PDF and stuff like that. Now, what the Flask app does is it retrieves context embeddings from vector database. So what does the what is a vector database, right? So let's say you're, um, if anyone has tried the Bing chat, you'll see that there is a token limit on every Bing chat. So you can basically put in a certain number of words before it runs out, like 4,000 uh, 4, words or something like that. Now, how do we solve that problem? Because what if I have a 10 page PDF to upload? It's gonna take a lot of time. It looks easy for us. But the AI model in, in the back scene is actually working and, uh, and consuming a lot of GPU power in order to make that happen. So what does the vector database do is it reduces the amount of information. Basically, it shortens the text. It shortens the uh, data so that it can be easily read and it also reduces the token limit so that we can add more data. Now, what does it do is aggregates embeddings. Basically, embeddings are context embeddings. Basically, there are little points. Aggregates embeddings by meaning it, it just focuses on the key points. So let's say you are asking an AI app or chat GPT to write you an assignment. It will focus on the assignment part and understand that you're talking about assignment or doing assignments. It won't have to read the entire thing because that is very power consuming. It looks easy, but it's actually a lot of power consuming. And aggregates embeddings, chat history, initial prompt, and prompt template into enhanced prompt. So it, it basically creates a better prompt or better input from the input you give. Because you don't know what the AI app is understanding. It, it creates an understanding of its own. So if you give it a 100-line uh, input, it will reduce that to 10 lines and understand the most basic elements and understand the key points of what you actually want. Then what happens is enhanced prompt sent to LLM in Amazon Bedrock. So the enhanced prompt from the Flask app is sent to Amazon Bedrock. And Amazon Bedrock then performs the rest of the operation, basically the LLM or ChatGPT or OpenAI API whatever you use in the bedrock, from the Bedrock models, it will get that input, the specified input, uh, the uh, perfect input that, uh, that was aggregated here, and then use that input to generate the output or generate the output that you want to see. Uh, we're going to be seeing some examples after this, so you will have a better understanding. Then, Response is received in the front end of the Flask app. Where is the front end of the Flask app? You may ask. It's right here. So basically what happens is, first of all, it goes to our database and uh, it, it could go to FIE, FAISS or Amazon Kendra. Uh, basically, vector database um, shortens the data, shortens the amount of data or token limit. And then it's sent to Amazon Bedrock and it sends out a signal or the output and the output goes to our front end. Then we can see the output there. So here's an example. Basically, uh, what we're doing is we're using the anthropic plot model. What the model does is you give it to you give it some text, basically. And after it's given the text, 
you can choose basically what kind of models I want to use. That's the power of the bedrock, uh, bedrock, Amazon bedrock. Basically, you can use a lot of like, yeah, upload PDF. You can see here that on the first, uh, you have a lot of choices. Basically, you can upload a PDF and converse with the PDF. Then you can choose what you want to do with that PDF or what kind of uh, local memory or cloud memory you want to use for that PDF. Where do you want to storage? And you can clear the history of your messages. Basically, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of functionality for your app. But this is just a basic implementation. And I will be providing you with the link to the setup as well, uh, because uh, we don't have uh, like a lot of time for all of you to set up the app. So I will be providing a, a different um, a different tutorial for that as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is just a basic implementation and this is just the architecture of the app. Now uh, a little bit of, oh, okay. So before I get uh, further, uh, let me show you guys finally that what I have been showing you and how it actually works. Okay. So first of all, we are going to go to the Amazon Bedrock demo. Okay, I'm just gonna stop the sharing. And I am going to show you a demo of Amazon Bedrock model and how it can help you. Amazon Bedrock demo. Sure. All right, so as you can see in this link, the link is provided in the presentation and I will also provide it in the comment section as well later on. And as you can see, uh, we have the AI stylist. So what is AI stylist? AI stylist is a fashion stylist who's going to tell you what kind of clothes you should wear depending on your input. So let's try the demo. Okay, let's read the scenario here. So find an outfit in less than five minutes with the AI stylist. In this example, see how you can use Amazon Bedrock capabilities such as foundation models, knowledge bases, and agents to build a generative AI application. So let's start exploring. So, hi, welcome to this demo. AI stylist is a new shopping experience for customers. Let's explore how Amazon Bedrock features come together to make AI stylist work. In this demo, we'll go through a few customer prompts and point out tooltips to show you what Amazon Bedrock is doing behind the scene. We'll also dive deeper into the following capabilities, custom pro customer prompts, knowledge basis agents. Okay, so let's start now and basically, uh, yeah, it's a demo, so it's automatically writing these. And I am a consultant traveling to New York next week. So I'm traveling to New York next week. What kind of outfit should I wear on my first day in the office? So let's generate my look. What it's going to do is basically give me an image of what I should wear. So that's very intuitive. Uh, let's see. Here is how the bedrock model is working. So as we can see, we have customer prompt. Basically, what I want to do is I, I am going to New York and what kind of look should I get in New York? Then the knowledge base APIs. Basically, it's using the data of the LLM model. Uh, for example, open API or open AI APIs or other APIs. And then what it does is there are two models at work here. That is product catalog agent. What is product catalog agent? Basically, what kind of clothes I'm going to wear, this agent is trained on that type of data. So you are designed to extract the relevant entities from the prompt and invoke the prompt catalog to generate relevant outfit descriptions. So that's what this agent does. Now, what's the model details? It's the cloud model and FM for content creation. And for the image generation agent, you are designed to create a prompt 
using text and invoke the text to image model to generate an image. Basically, the second agent is creating the image. What model are we using here? We're using the stable diffusion model, which is an image generation model. Now let's view my looks. Okay, I have selected two outfits. Sorry, I think I'm in dark mode, so it's harder to see. Yeah, so I have selected two outfits for you to choose based on your inputs and available items. Customer reviews, everything. So it has uh, analyzed everything and given me these two looks. Okay, these are female looks. Uh, I think it messed up. Yeah, mm, I should have said it's for male. But either way, it's uh, kind of AI generated, whatever, <laughs> it works. So what do people like about the business formal jacket? I can ask more questions about this type of looks. So the AI stylist is thinking and customer like the quality color and fabric of the jacket. And we can ask more questions as well. Oh, it also shows the customer reviews as well and the quality of the fabric. And it can show me where I can find this kind of product, let's say on Amazon. What size should I wear? Let's see what it says. Does it know my size? Based on your previous purchases, I suggest ordering size M, which is actually, yeah, uh, pretty close, I guess. The business blazer jacket runs true to size. Oh, I can also add the jacket to my cart. That's very nice. Done. Added the, yeah. So basically, it can do all of the work for you without you having to leave this chatbot. That's the power of Amazon Bedrock. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Amazon Bedrock model. Now let's learn to build your own AI chatbot using your own custom prompts. And how are we going to do that? We're going to be using our uh, we're going to be using our Party Rock. Now, what is Party Rock? Party Rock is the uh, the party rock helps you create your own uh, kind of uh, AI models very easily. Basically, you don't even have to learn AI or machine learning or understand all of the sh things I have said until now. All you have to do is, uh, okay, Shanjit Hassan says, this AI can choose better color. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, this is a demo right now, so we can't ask it to do everything for us. Uh, but eventually, uh, when we build our own app, basically it can choose anything at all and it can do all the work for you. And yeah, so you can see that add the rest of the items from the business formal look to my cart. Basically, there's other items and it can add them to my cart as well. So I can finalize my order. And as you can see, it's finalizing my order. And now this time we're using a different AI model. What is this AI model? Let's see inventory management agent. What is inventory management agent doing? It's doing is that you are designed to help track and process inventory for the store. So this is not my, this is for, not for the consumer. This is for the uh, manufacturer or for the company that is selling me the product. So what does the product do? The product is basically, uh, oh, let's see the model details. What is the model? Amazon Titan. What does Amazon Titan do? Uh, it uh, do, oh, and what does FM mean, by the way? So FM is basically foundation model, which is the name of the machine learning models built by AWS for summarization, content creation, and question answering. So it answers the questions and adds the product or inventory management. Weather API agent. What is the weather API agent designed to do? You are designed to help suggest items based on the weather or event type. So if I'm going to New York, let's say, I don't need uh, kind of uh, dresses for an uh, occasion, uh, wedding occasion. I don't need wedding dresses. I need formal dresses. So it understands the type of weather and the type of clothing I would need. And it selects the fabrics and everything. So what model are we using? We are again using the plot model uh, for content creation and stuff. And now let's say my view card. So basically this is my card right now. So all this was done using one AI app. So basically, I told the AI app that I want to go to New York. So select me an outfit. It made a selection of the outfit. It ordered the, all of the outfit for me. And it also delivers and tells me about the new. Oh, look at this. So 
since you mentioned that you'll be in New York next week, I noticed the weather might be a little chilly and rainy. You may want to consider adding a jacket or umbrella to your weather. So it tells me the weather data as well so that I can be prepared. So I can also add this to my order as well. And uh, I can just end the demo here because uh, uh, we're on a short time and I also have to show you how you can create your own. So basically um, we can also add it. It's the same process. It's going to add it to my cart and order it uh, as well. And uh, we can, I'm ending the demo at the moment. But yeah, nice work. Wow. Okay. So basically, there's a lot more. This is just uh, the beginning. There is a lab available for you guys. Uh, that is the hands-on lab. I'm just going to give the uh, link of this as well to the chat. So Shanjit Hassan says, is, is this API free for developers? Well, uh, we have a limit to how much you can use uh, the API, but basically you have to apply uh, for the bedrock model. So let's say, <clears throat> oh, I'm actually going to uh, show you how you can do it for free as well. So there's actually an open source uh, model um, uh, for creating this app on your local computer so that you can uh, kind of uh, create your own AI apps there as well. So I'm going to be showing you at the end there. But uh, there's a lot of free courses here that you can learn on your own. And as you can see, these courses are like uh, two hours or one hour long. And that's uh, very long for this event. But what I want to do in this event is basically give you a basic example and kind of inspire you to uh, pursue uh, more learning in this sector. So I'm going to be adding the link here as well. And uh, uh, if anyone wants, I can provide uh, all of the references. Uh, I'll add the references as well. And if anyone wants, they can, um, if they want access to the uh, to uh, the slides, I can provide them in our meetup group. The meetup group link should be in the description of this YouTube video. Uh, and if it's not there, I can I will also add it there later on as well. Uh, and I will also give you the link to the meetup group. I basically share all the resources there. So you don't have to worry about the resources or how to find them. Uh, but basically what you can do is do this lab on your own time as well. It uh, it might take you to, uh, oh, this is actually on GitHub. So yeah, AI stylist. This is how you build the AI stylist basically. And this is also uses Jupyter notebook as well. So it's fairly easy to do as well. And uh, I might make a different tutorial on this uh, as it would require some time uh, for, uh, for the participants or viewers. Uh, but basically, yes, this was the demo and uh, I will stop sharing this part right now and go to uh, the party rock. So I'm going to, I am going to use PartyRock to create my own chat GPT or AI agents. Yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing that for now. And let's go to party. Share screen. Okay, so this is Amazon Party Rock. What is Party Rock? Party Rock is built upon all of the things that I've shown you until now. All of the AI models, all of the bedrock models. But one crucial thing that it has done differently is that uh, it has enabled you to build your own app using just text and nothing more. So how can you build your, okay. So there's a few examples given here as well. Uh, what is this haiku creator? Well, haiku is sort of like Japanese poems. Uh, let's say podcast generator. We've all heard of podcast. So let's say podcast topic, the anthropological history of parties and social gatherings throughout the ages. Podcast name, ancient rivalry, a party through ages. Ah, let's see. So it has created an image from my input and it, it has uh, given a name and everything else to it as well. So I can basically download it or, you know, upload it to somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, I can actually speak to it at the moment too. 
so let's see. Oh, I can give it all of the information required for the podcast. So let's say the podcast topic. Okay, let's create this. Uh, po- uh, let's create a podcast of our own. Okay, so basically, let's say artificial intelligence. Oops. podcast description oh it automatically generated the podcast description for me and it's generating the podcast name as well the ai frontier host one name so all i did was give it a podcast topic and from that one input it has created the podcast name uh, the podcast description and the host names as well so there's a it's given a host name uh, but i can give it uh, my own host name as well and based on a text some of the second host of artificial intelligence podcast is diego host one backstory it has created a backstory but like basically it is creating everything i need in order to uh, host and uh, a podcast about artificial intelligence okay so that was just a basic implementation so let's build our own app right now so this says that build your own app. Uh, okay, before I do that, I'm just going to give this link to the chat so that you guys can try it out. Okay, so Shandhi just said, yes, I'm eager to learn them all, but I have no idea how GitHub works. Okay, so GitHub is fairly easy to understand if you're just starting out um let's say uh there is an example at the end that i'm going to show you uh basically um in the slides i showed you the basic architecture of the uh, model of the ai model but um you i am also going to give you the code and the setup instructions for that model as well and i'm also going to be creating a different tutorial uh possibly in the future uh, to run the, that model so that you can understand how to run it as well and understanding github is fairly easy there are a few courses on github and first of all when you're starting out you don't have to use a lot of github you can just uh, download the project on your uh, computer and run the commands and it will work just fine and for the next question is is this a pre-trained model for podcast yes this model is pre-trained on a lot of post- podcast information basically we uh, uh, trained a cloud model or a open ai model uh, it wasn't built by me by the way but it was built by the party rock community basically they uh, create these uh, apps and they also you can view other uh, party rock member ads for example try out the featured apps built with party rocks so these are built with uh, people like you and me and uh, they just come around and they just build their own app and uh, then post them here uh, discover the next big hit basically there's a lot of things you can do here so let's try to build an agent that's going to help us with research or assignment writing but uh, i would like to make it a little bit more specific okay so let's say an ai agent that can help me with collecting and visualizing research data research data uh, when given a topic the agent will search about all the research paper available on that topic it will give the research paper a name it will give our paper a title let's say and it will create a let's say literature review a table of contents and references basically we're going to be using this AI agent to write our research paper references 
and it will help me one important i'm trying to bring some unique into this so it will help me to visualize the research data research data that i input okay so let's generate the app so it's basically working on generating the app right now Uh, this might take uh, a little while. Oh, yeah. Right. This is made. As you can see, it does everything for you. You don't have to worry about uh, what models to use, uh, what, uh, how to input your information, nothing like that. And OK. So let's say enter a research topic. Enter a research topic. Let's say... Um, agriculture iot in agriculture let's try that or let's say ai in agriculture okay so ai in agriculture so you see it's creating automatically all of the things that are required and yeah so here's a small re literature review it's of uh, 250 words and here's a table of contents and all of the references now what it needs is the research data in order to create the data visualization right so i am going to give it the research data enter numerical research data related to the topic Okay, I'm going to search out some of the numerical research data on agriculture in AI. Sorry, AI in agriculture. And I'm just going to input that as a text. And let's see, uh, I'm actually searching for some uh, actual research data uh, that I can input. So uh, let's see if I can find some. But basically, you can see how this actually works. Uh, and this basically used one LLM only because we don't actually need a lot of uh, like we're not generating any images or anything. And I can actually share this research assistant. I can also like yeah i can also edit the uh, sort of name and stuff okay but for now i don't need that much i only need uh some of the things okay i, I just need to input the data okay just wait one minute Uh, okay. And also, uh, if you wait around and uh, if you are interested to see more events like this, I am going to be sharing the uh, feedback form. So if you have time, you can fill up the feedback form. Event feedback form. Okay, so I have given a event feedback form uh, at the end, and I am also going to give it uh, on the presentation as well and uh, at the end, uh, so that you can uh, give some feedback on the event, or if you want to see more uh, type of events like this, and uh, so it uses stable division only, another one does exactly as your prompt. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's actually pretty good. And uh, you can build more agents like these uh, that have sort of different kinds of things. And research, research data on AI in agriculture. So numerical. 
So I'm actually using uh, another AI as I speak to collect uh, to collect some of the data or uh, research paper references. Uh, it's all like basically data, same type of data basically is used. Okay. Uh, Yeah, sorry about that. All right, I hope you guys can hear me. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, okay, so let's try entering some data. Uh, I'll just make up some data, like soil pH. Soil pH is like say 5.5 to 7.5. Uh, it was on, let's say, 11, 12, 20, 23. And we'll just create a basic version of some data. So I'll pH 5.6 to 8.5 on 12, 12. Yeah, it's uh, creating a basic data, basically. Uh, it's nothing much, uh, but... It is, uh, oh, <laughs> it's creating, I think the AI model is confused. Yeah. Okay, whatever. But basically it didn't use the data exactly from there, but there's other AI agents to do that. Uh, but basically it gave you some sort of a visualization and obviously text generation models are not that good, at, at least not um, at the moment, but uh, they will be more improved uh, at least in the next few years, I hope. Uh, there's actually more um, uh, more agents like these uh, that can be built with other uh, models like uh, not models but frameworks like Langchain or Streamlit. Uh, I would I would prefer those models, but uh, I will be sharing those as well with you all uh, in the resources. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much this section that is creating your own AI agents. And now uh, for something, uh, for a little bit about the club. Basically, we're uh, almost at the end of our event here. And I'm going to be sharing with you all. Okay, one more thing. Uh, do make sure to, do make sure to sort of uh, fill out the feedback form if you want to see more, more of these events in uh, later on. And Yeah. So that's pretty much it. And now I'm going to be telling you guys a bit about the club. WS. Okay. Yeah. So this is AWS Cloud Club at Quit. Now, at AWS Cloud Club, uh, we have arranged one other event uh, before. Uh, that was back in June, June or July, probably. And after that, we did AWS Cloud Day, uh, which was led by uh, Zaman Sar, uh, who is currently in USA, uh, but he is a very supportive person towards the cloud clubs in Bangladesh and uh, he has always supported the uh, the spread of uh, cloud computing and uh, AWS in Bangladesh. Now for the swags. So as being part of AWS Cloud Club has a lot of benefits. For example, you get to go to the AWS Cloud Day, which is the which was probably the biggest uh, cloud computing event or technical event in Bangladesh uh, ever. And also these are all the swags and uh, type of things that I received from my captain hood and as well as from the event as well. And in fact, I'm wearing some of the swag as well. Uh, but basically this is very cool to have a big community. You can actually join the meetup group. I believe the meetup group link is given. 
uh, right there under the uh, right there under the meetup uh, link is he given here uh yeah so basically this is not uh, kind of a, your regular club from uh, universities but these uh basically clubs are like ambassadorships basically aws or microsoft uh gives you the uh, captainship and you are uh you know you have to carry out some community work uh, through your universities or reach out to teachers or uh, other people who are going to basically give you that kind of uh, opportunity to uh, host the events. So that's pretty much it. And that's uh, maybe why, because you haven't heard of the uh, club, maybe because it's uh, fairly new compared to all other clubs in Kuwait. And as well as we're trying to uh, add more people to the community as we speak. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And another uh, thing that uh, I'll try to do is, uh, you know, make more people interested in uh, this kind of work because uh, it's a, not a very well-known sector, and but still it's uh, going to increase in the next few years, obviously. And that's uh, about the club as well. And for the last point... So all the references, uh, this is, okay. So now I am going to show you guys basically the example. Okay, sorry, before I say thank you, uh, I will show you guys about the example project that is available on GitHub. So I will present share screen. Docker installation AWS samples. Okay, hope you guys can see the page is is AWS samples. So what is AWS samples? Basically, these are sample projects or small projects that you can do on your own uh, in your house or anywhere you like. And what this does is this is this is the uh, model that I have been speaking out in the uh, presentation, and this is the uh, basic uh, structure of the model. So this is a RAG or retrieval augmented generation model with a retrieval augmented generator uh, generation app with AWS Bedrock and React or ReactJS. So retrieval augmented generation, what does that actually mean? What it basically means is that you give the AI model some data, it retrieves some of the uh, key points from that data. That's called retrieval augmentation or retrieving data from a given uh, document. Let's say you can upload a PDF file and it retrieves the data from the PDF. And uh, basically there are a few prerequisites and setup options here. And uh, because of some time constraints, I might not be able to show you guys the entire process, but I will be uploading a different tutorial on that as well, how to set up the GitHub on your local computer and uh, some of the things are pretty uh, regular like python 3.8 or higher and you know python sdk aws cli instructions are already given uh, so it wouldn't be too hard and node.js obviously is uh, if you're if you've done some coding you probably have heard of it or have most of the things installed but uh, running through github would be uh, some trouble if you don't have experience with github but uh, we will be sharing it in a different uh, tutorial soon. And after that, there are there are part uh, there's Party Rock. Uh, the link is given, and as well as the Amazon Bedrock demo that you can uh, test out uh, in your free time. And with that, we are pretty much done with the event here. And uh, I hope you guys learned something or at least uh, have some new information with you that you can use. Oh, I'm going to stop sharing right now. Yeah. So, yes. So I hope you guys learned something and I hope uh, you guys can use this information later on. And hopefully um, it would benefit you in the future. And if obviously, if you want to see more kinds of events like these, you can join 
uh, you can sort of uh, do more kind of projects like these as well as uh, there will be possibly some boot camps or some hackathon uh, type of events later on uh, next year uh okay so shanijan says if i want to be a somebody at ai near future how can i prepare myself so basically i think what you mean is you want to be be an uh, maybe an ai engineer or something like that so in this uh, basically in case of bangladesh or in the context of bangladesh uh some of the mentors i have had it's not like i'm an expert in ai technology but uh, i was basically i'm basically trying to give you an idea of how the job market would be for uh bangladesh or from abroad as well but uh, one of the mentors i have had uh, was a participant in one open source program which was google summer of code uh what he worked there on basically uh, was uh, tensorflow so uh, Shandita san if you have worked with uh, some ai models i believe you know already about tensorflow and uh, tensorflow and pytorch there's a lot more but uh, basically he worked on the official tensorflow github repository or the official uh, tensorflow project uh, to do some of the tasks in, in uh, tensorflow so what that helped him do is he understood a better understanding right now he has joined as an ai engineer uh at i think nitex uh, which is a startup that helps people with uh, their ai technology or provides ai solutions uh, so basically if you're trying to uh, get something into an ai field in bangladesh that's that's uh, i think uh, one of the uh, only ways uh, uh, that an ai startup but uh, in in my experience the bangladeshi ai startups are not uh, up to uh, that level as compared to the foreign foreign countries so uh, what i would suggest is uh, i would suggest to focus on research type of work because i have seen a lot of people even aws does support uh, uh, you know research works to the technology or uh, gives you grant for your research work even microsoft ibm and a, a lot of other companies do it depends on your research project uh, but obviously what you can do is uh, get these ai services or as you said this these machine learning models or cloud services do cost some money but what you can do through uh, applying for some of the um, uh, some of the projects is that you can apply the idea and they will give you the credits for free sometimes basically um, a lot of uh, through a lot of fellowship programs and things uh, like uh, uh, you know the, the one i talked about google summer of code basically uh, you can work on projects and get paid for them yeah you have currently very little coding on tensorflow or pytorch but uh, they're not very hard or advanced they're actually beginner friendly they're actually pretty beginner friendly as you said that you have trained stable diffusion uh, so if you can train that model uh, i think you can pretty much learn tensorflow basically when i learned tensorflow it's not like i uh, learned everything in, at once uh, even uh, even now i am trying to learn more about pytorch and uh, the uh, the pytorch repository as well there's a project on pytorch ignite uh, if you want you can check it out on github and uh, yeah that's what i'm saying so if you have tried to build ai apps before so uh, that should be enough to start you know on tensorflow or pytorch and uh, yeah, API is a big issue. That's what I'm trying to tell you that if you have a good project or if you want to, let's say, start your own startup, you can actually apply for startup grants. What startup grants do is they give you the API credits for free. So you get like one thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars of API credits that you can use to build your products. So you should look into uh, something like that if you are going uh, towards that field. And there's a lot of obviously free trainings on uh, each of the technologies, AI technologies, the courses I talked about from uh, AWS as well. And uh, after that, oh yeah, uh, there's a little thing at the end, I think, wait. Um, oh yeah. I want to say thank you. <laughs> so yeah, thank you to everyone who was uh, at this event and basically uh, who joined. Uh, 
uh, they say it's pricing issue of OpenAI API. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a pricing issue. And if you uh, if you can, there's a lot of uh, AI services offers uh, are offered by AWS. For example, Bedrock. You also have to apply for this as well. But if you apply properly, they will give you those credits. Basically, you don't you won't have to uh, pay for the Open API API. Open AI API uh, for a long period of time so that you can you can have enough time for like three to six months to build a proper product. So that's a great uh, way to do that. So yeah. So I hope you uh, learned something and I hope to see you all uh, in AWS Cloud Club uh, future events. And thank you or thanks to all of you for joining the event as well. And hopefully I'll see you in the next event and hopefully we can uh, do some more uh, more interesting events. This was obviously an introduction, introductory or basic type of uh, event to let you know about the technology. But uh, hopefully I will uh, be arranging something where you can actually build something and submit it so that it can be evaluated by the AWS uh, software engineers or judges from AWS. And uh, hopefully that would be a great opportunity for everyone. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining the event and hopefully I'll see you next time. Yeah, so this is goodbye and uh, please don't forget to fill out the feedback form uh, on your way out and hopefully I'll see you in the next event. So thank you so much.